What's going on everybody and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 Early Access Meta Sounds video. We've taken a look at getting started with Meta Sounds, creating footsteps, creating dynamic music transitions, and even how to control Meta Sounds with blueprints. So what are we getting into today? Controlling Meta Sounds with MIDI. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, there will be a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So before we can start controlling meta sounds with our MIDI controller over here, we first need to understand how to set up our MIDI controller to control Unreal in general. And MIDI devices aren't something that's new to Unreal Engine 5. Uh, they've been around for a while. I don't remember the exact version of Unreal that MIDI devices started becoming available. So if you happen to know, let me know in the comments. Um, but what we're gonna do is just to show you how to get this set up, we're going to set it up so that this drum pad over here will make our character jump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and come in here to our third person blueprint. And before we can really set this up, we first need to know the device ID of our MIDI device. Now, my particular setup, I do have two MIDI devices connected. My audio interface has MIDI in and out, so my computer sees it as a MIDI device. But then we also have our Alesis QX61 MIDI controller over here. So I need to know which one is which. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in here and we are going to do an event begin play. And we want to find all of our MIDI devices. So I can just type in all MIDI and we need this to find all MIDI device info. And from here, we're gonna drag out and we're gonna do what's called a for each loop. And we're gonna connect our input devices to this array. And what we wanna do is we wanna break this out so that on our screen, we're gonna do another print screen so that we can see the device name as well as the device ID. That way we know we're picking the right one. So I'm gonna drag off here and I'm going to do a print string is we're gonna end up printing this on the screen and off of our array element, we want to break the MIDI device info. Now, because I'm getting multiple pieces of information, I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and we're gonna do an append and you want this string append. I'm gonna go ahead and add two more pins because I want this first one to be the device name. And then I want the second thing listed on the screen to be the device ID or deceive ID. Device ID. And so we're gonna go ahead and connect our name here and our ID here. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn this return value here to our print string. And I want this to hang out on the screen, on the screen long enough so that I can actually read it. So I'm just gonna call it 30 seconds and compile, save. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So as soon as I hit play, you're gonna see up in the top left-hand corner of the screen, we have our device name. I've got my focus right, which is my audio interface, and that is ID number two. But the QX61, which is the one that we want, is device ID number one. So now that we know that our keyboard is device number one, we can come out here and delete this and we are going to create a MIDI device input. So we're going to create MIDI and we want the device input controller. Don't select just device controller. It's not gonna work. So we need the input controller. And like I just said, we know that our device ID is number one. So what we're gonna do off of this is we are going to bind an event on MIDI note on. 
we're going to go ahead and collect select our target and then off of this event we're going to drag out here and we're going to create an event and from our drop down we want to create a matching event now you can call this whatever you want like i can call this midi note on as soon as i hit enter though uh, there is something that happens up here this errors out so you'll you will have to come back in here to your drop down and then reselect midi note on otherwise they won't communicate with each other why it doesn't automatically select this after i rename that i don't know um possibly one of the reasons that the midi is still in beta so what we're going to do is this is going to trigger whenever i hit any note down here but like i said specifically we want to use this drum pad to make our character jump so we need to know what note value that is so we're going to do another print string and i just want to get the notes go ahead and compile that move it back off the screen hit play and like i said th that will trigger anytime we hit any note but specifically i want this drum pad so this drum pad is note 51. so we can come back over here and from here there's a couple different ways that you can set this up what I like to do if I'm using just a single MIDI note is I'm gonna pull off the note and we're going to do an equal and I'm gonna call this 51. So now uh, if whatever note is coming out equals 51, this is going to return a value of true. So we're gonna pull off of our MIDI note on and we're gonna do a branch. And now if this is true, it will spit out true. And if we hit any other note other than that specific drum pad, it will be a false. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move this up to where our jump is. And we can connect that true to the character jump and compile it. So now if we hit play, if I hit my space bar, if I click on the screen and then hit spacebar, uh, you can see that our character does jump. But now if we come over here to this drum pad, we can see that it's also causing our character to jump. And that's how you set up the MIDI device controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a different map that I had created where I have a 61 key controller. And on the screen, I created a 61 key piano. All right, so on the screen, you can see that I've got a full 61 key piano, uh, not full because full is 88, but it's 61 key piano. And I've just got a backdrop set up uh, because I do have a character actor up here or a cinema camera actor uh, just kind of pointed down just to give it a background. And I am not going to be building this entire setup in this video it's already built uh, it took me hours to do not because it's difficult just because it's really tedious uh, so i'll show you it working and then i will pull up both the blueprint and the meta sound so that you can see what went into it um, and then we can go from there i'm gonna go ahead and hit play and i've got this set up so that all the keys articulate and we just have it running to um, a gener a signal generator. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and let's pull up our level blueprint here. All right, so we're here in our level blueprint um, and so just like I did in the first person character, I've got my event begin play. We created our MIDI device. Again, my device ID is number one and for this uh, we had to do a bind event to on midi note on and the on midi note off uh, that way we could tell our meta sound when to play the sound and then to stop playing the sound when we release it 
Uh, so just like I did in the other one, I've got our custom events. And then here, uh, this get player controller and the cinema camera actor, that's just switching the camera to that locked position when the level starts instead of having a controllable character. Our add audio component is our synth, uh, which I do have that meta sound set up. I'll show you that here in just a minute. And just like we did in the previous video with controlling uh, meta sounds with blueprints, we're getting the parameter interface. And as I mentioned in that video, this node is key to being able to control meta sounds. So we had to do a function for all the MIDI note on, and this is where things start to get a little crazy. This is where the tedious part of this comes in. So my MIDI controller, um, if I start with my low C and move up to my high C, all of my notes are number 36 all the way through 96. And then we had to do that again for our MIDI note off. And you can see we've got the same keys. And this is where it gets absolutely crazy. As you can see, because I have triggers for every single one of the 61 notes. And I'll show you why here in a moment when we get into the meta sound. And um, I really didn't feel like taking the time to clean all of these wires up. It's this was this already took me long enough to do. Uh, but if I zoom in here, it's actually just the same thing over and over and over again. It's this 61 times. So I've got individual triggers for our C2, which is our low C, all the way up to, I believe it's C7. Yeah, C7, which is the high C. And the majority of this, like everything in the middle here, is just the rotator to get the keys to move. Uh, if I wasn't doing anything visually on screen, the wires would still be pretty crazy, but it wouldn't be as much. Um, but I could technically do from this note, change the note to a frequency and play it in our meta sound that way. But then we would just have a, a mono synth. So it'd just be one note at a time. I have this set up as a poly synth so that that way we can actually play multiple notes. So again, this is the entire setup in the blueprint. I mean, I could make this a little cleaner. I wanted to go ahead and select all of these and then collapse the node. It does look a little nicer. Um, but then, you know, once you get into that function, it's still just as crazy. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we're going to go into our synthesizer here. Now in our synthesizer, things are just as crazy as the blueprint was. I have input functions for every single note on and off. So as I'm sure you could probably guess, this does look pretty insane. Um, but again, it's really just the exact same thing over and over again. Uh, the reason that I have these different is because I did come in here to the frequencies and I created a signal generator specifically for each frequency. And like I said, this is what allows it to be a polysynth instead of a monosynth. So I've got these trigger toggles going to the enable and the triggers themselves are the C2 on and C2 off, which like I showed you in the level blueprint, I bring this back over now. 
and I dive in here. These are the triggers that we had talked about in controlling meta sounds with blueprints. So you'll run it off of the get parameter interface that goes to a trigger and then whatever we name that trigger is what we name it here. So we've got our trigger toggle so that when we hit the key, it sets whatever note to on. When we release it, it turns it back off. And we're doing that with the MIDI note on and the MIDI note off functions. And from there, it's just going to its individual signal generator. And I have the predefined frequencies for each piano note. From there, we're just running them into mixers and from mixers into mixers and then to our output. So it's it's a super simple setup. It's just a lot. It's a lot to set up. It took me probably, I'd say three to four hours to set this whole thing up. Uh, had I done it as a mono synth, I probably could have been done in you know half hour, 45 minutes, because it would be just one of these signal generators. And then we would be using the, the MIDI note to frequency to change an array for our frequency. So that's gonna wrap things up for this video. Um, I know that there was a lot of stuff on the screen so if you run into any issues you have any questions please feel free to hit me up in the comments below or you can get a hold of me on the sound effects guide discord server there will be a link in the description or if there's anything else that you'd like to see me try with meta sounds let me know until next time